Two Irishmen were sitting at a pub drinking beer and watching the brothel across the street. They see a Baptist minister walk into the brothel, and one of them sees, Aye, tis a shame to see a man of the cloth going bad. Then they see a rabbi enter the brothel, and the other Irishman said, Aye, tis a shame to see that the Jews are falling victim to temptation as well. Then they see a Catholic priest enter the brothel, and one of the Irishmen says, What a terrible pity. One of the girls must be dying. <laughs> a Dublin businessman had a tiring day on the road. He checked into his Galway hotel, and because he was concerned that the dining room might close soon, left his luggage at the front desk and went immediately to eat. After a leisurely dinner, he reclaimed his luggage and realized that he had forgotten his room number. He went back to the desk and told Paddy, the clerk, My name is Seamus O'Flynn. Can you please tell me what room I am in? Certainly, replied Paddy. You're in the lobby. <laughs> Three Irishmen, Paddy, Sean and Seamus, were stumbling home from the pub late one night and found themselves on the road which led past the old graveyard. Come have a look over here, says Paddy. It's Michael O'Grady's grave, God bless his soul. He lived to the ripe old age of 87. That's nothing, says Sean. Here's one named Patrick O'Toole. It says here that he was 95 when he died. Just then, Seamus yells out, Good God, here's a fella that got to be 145. What was his name? asks Paddy. Seamus stumbles around a bit, awkwardly lights a match to see what else is written on the stone marker, and exclaims, Miles, from Dublin. <laughs> Brenda O'Malley is home making dinner, as usual, when Tim Finnegan arrives at her door. Brenda, may I come in? he asks. I've something rather important to tell you. Of course you can come in. You're always welcome here, Tim, says Brenda. But where's me husband, Seamus? That's what I'm here to be telling you, lass. There's been a simply tragic accident down at the Guinness Brewery. Oh, God, no, cries Brenda. Please don't tell me. I must, Brenda. Your husband, Seamus, is gone. I'm dreadfully sorry, lass. Finally, Brenda looks up at Tim and tearfully asks, Please tell me how it happened, Tim. Oh, lass, it was terrible. Poor Seamus fell into a vat of Guinness stout and drowned. Oh, my sweet Jesus, but please tell me true, Tim. Did he at least go quickly? Well, no, lass, not exactly. No? No, fact is, he got out three times to visit the men's room. <laughs> Paddy says, Hey, Mick. I found this pen. Is it yours? Mick replies, I don't know. Let me have it so I can give it a go. He tries it and says, Yes, it is. Thanks, Paddy. Paddy asks him, How can you be so sure? Mick replies, That's easy. I'd recognize my handwriting anywhere. <laughs> Old Uncle Seamus was a seafarer all his life. Just before he passed away, he made his nephews, Mick and Sean, promise to give him a burial at sea. Soon enough, Uncle Seamus passed away, and the day after his wake, Mick and Sean rowed out to sea with Uncle Seamus, all stitched up in a burial bag. After a while, Mick asked, Do you think this is for enough out, Sean? Sean slipped over the side of the boat, only to end up standing in water up to his knees. This'll never do, Mick. Let's row some out more. After a bit more rowing, Sean slipped over the side, but the water was only up to his belly, so on they rowed. Again, Mick asked Sean, Do you think this is for enough out? Sean slipped over the side and said, No, this'll never do. The water was only up to his chest, so on they rowed and rowed and rowed, until finally Sean slipped over the side and disappeared under the water, 
Quite a bit of time went by, and poor Mick was really getting himself into a state, when suddenly, Sean broke the surface, gasping for breath. Well, is it deep enough? Aye, Mick. Hand me the shovel. <laughs> An Irishman left the local pub and was making his way unsteadily home when he decided to take a shortcut and got lost. He went to have a seat on a rock and figure out where he went wrong. As he sat, he heard a squeak from the rock. Get off me, you lout! shouted a leprechaun who had been napping on the rock. Though in a drunken stupor, the Irishman knew he had the leprechaun where he wanted him. Not until you grant me my wishes, said the Irishman. Get off me, and I'll grant you the customary three wishes, gasped the leprechaun. Once freed, the leprechaun paced back and forth while the Irishman sat on the rock and pondered his wishes. Come on, come on, I don't have all night, said the leprechaun. I'm too thirsty to think straight, said the Irishman. Make my first wish a nice cool pint of beer. Poof, in his hand, appeared a pint of beer. Come on, come on, what are your other two wishes? prodded the leprechaun. Just let me finish my beer, and I'll tell you what the other two wishes are, said the Irishman, while sipping his beer. You'll never finish it. It's a magical beer. As soon as you empty it, it'll refill itself, said the leprechaun. The Irishman proceeded to drain the pint, but as soon as he brought it away from his lips, it was full again. Astonished, he once again drained the pint, only to have it full again instantly. There, are you satisfied? Now what are your other two wishes? asked the leprechaun. Smiling, the Irishman said, I'll just have two more of these, please. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel. This is important. It will help me continue my work.